Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. If you're like me, you probably love to spend time outside observing nature in a healthy ecosystem. And a healthy ecosystem works best when all the different plants and animals are interacting and creating balance. But what happens when an ecosystem is out of balance? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today, so let's go ahead and explore. Plants and animals interact in so many different ways, but one really obvious way that they interact is by eating one another. There are lots of animals that eat plants and then animals that eat other animals, and they create food chains in their environment. And food chains show us how energy moves throughout an ecosystem. If we take a look at an ocean food chain, for an example, we might start with little sea grasses, plants that grow out of the bottom of the ocean. Those are eaten by small fish. And then the small fish are eaten by larger fish who are then eaten by sharks. And all of these different organisms, their job is to be food or to be a predator for one another in that food chain. Now, what do we think would happen if we removed one part of that food chain, if we got rid of one of those organisms that make up that food chain? This is a good time to pause the video and discuss as a class, what do you think would happen if we removed part of that food chain? All right, are you ready? Food chains are a really important part of keeping any environment in balance. The sharks, we think of that food chain we just talked about, the sharks help make sure that there's not too many large fish. The large fish help make sure there's not too many small fish. And the small fish make sure that the sea grasses don't grow out of control. So if we removed one part of that food chain, it would throw the whole food chain out of balance and potentially affect the entire environment. So let's pretend, let's remove the large fish from that food chain. And this is actually a problem that's happening with overfishing. Humans are fishing a lot of these large fish to eat for ourselves, but it's kind of throwing the ocean environment out of balance. So if we remove that large fish, now there's not that many fish for the sharks to eat and their populations might get smaller because they have less food. The small fish, their populations are gonna increase. They're gonna get bigger because there's not as many large fish around to eat them. And now the sea grasses, because there's so many small fish, they're gonna eat all the sea grass up and potentially take away food that could have been really important for other animals that eat sea grass. So by just removing that one part of the food chain, by removing just the large fish, we have thrown the entire food chain out of balance. When we remove an organism from their food chain and it affects the rest of the food chain, even organisms that they don't directly eat or interact with, we call this a trophic cascade. And a trophic cascade is a really fancy way of saying that there is a domino effect throughout that food chain, that all the different organisms are affected by the removal of that one organism. And trophic cascades can also occur if we add in species or if we increase the population of one of those organisms. So trophic cascades can occur whether we remove an organism or whether we add an organism. It just depends. And some organisms in their environment are super important. They're more important than all the other organisms that live in that area. And if we removed that organism, the entire ecosystem would collapse. And we call these really important species, we call them keystone species. And ecosystems depend on them to stay in balance and to stay healthy. A lot of the times keystone species are large predators like wolves or tigers or jaguars, but sea otters are also a great example of a keystone species in kelp forest ecosystems. Sea otters love to eat sea urchins, and sea urchins live on the bottom of the kelp forest down at the bottom of the ocean, and what a sea urchin likes to eat is kelp. 
And these kelp forests are home to so many different species of sharks and fish and other invertebrates like sea stars and anemones. And without the kelp forest, none of those species would have protection. It would be a lot harder for them to survive there. So if we removed the sea otters from that environment, the sea urchins would have less predators. The sea, urter popu sea urchin population would grow and grow and grow. They would eat all the kelp and suddenly the entire kelp forest would be gone. It would collapse. And all the different animals that rely on the kelp forest, they wouldn't be able to survive there anymore and the whole environment would change. So for any ecosystem, it's very important that we protect all the different animals, whether they're big, like a top predator, like a keystone species, or if they're a little bit smaller, they're still a really important part of their food chain and their environment. So whether the organisms are big or small, it's important that we do our part to help keep them where they're supposed to be, to help keep the environment balanced so we can keep going outside and enjoying nature in healthy environments. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today as we learned all about trophic cascades and keystone species. I hope you guys have a new appreciation for all the little critters out in your environment where you live. And I hope to see you guys next time at our next educating adventure.